my name is Kazuna Yamamoto. I am the um, founder and the president of Voice of Japan. I call myself, I consider myself an activist and an entrepreneur because I'm an activist for not only um, female rights, but for human rights, child rights, animals, and also sustainability. And also I'm an entrepreneur because I currently run, for example, I currently run an NGO. I run a toothbrush company with my Belgian business partner. Yeah. <laughs> A bamboo toothbrush company, and I'm also starting like a consulting company, so I consider myself both an activist and an entrepreneur. When you're big in Japan tonight. But my mom took me to an animal activist um, demonstration, a protest, and it was about um, fur, like animal fur, and that was the first time I was very interested in like the animal rights. And that was actually a very eye-opening event for me, which gradually um, changed my mind about different rights, about refugees, children, abuse, women's rights. Yeah. But it was about how, in order to make fur coats, how animals are treated and how they take off the fur off animals. That also helped, like, right now I'm a veg I'm vegetarian, I don't eat meat. That was also one of the biggest events that made me change my mind. And now, like, I feel like I got into animal rights and then I gradually got into different rights humans, um, sustainability, children. Shall I stay here at the zoo? Shall I go and change my point of view for every ugly scene? You did what you did. Honestly, I was very interested in different social issues and the more I knew about one issue was connected to another. Like first I was very interested in like labor, like cheap labor in Bangladesh. And then I was interested in, for example, the like the um, environmental pollution that is caused from cheap labor or from, and then also like that's what I understand like when I was um, advocating for animal rights and I got into sustainability, then I got into like clothes and that also went to like cheap labor for example in Uzbekistan and then also like women being exploited and then like FGM like everything was connected, and then the more I knew about everything I was very interested in everything. Also because they, especially in Japan, so many people don't aren't interested in social issues. Basically, there was a um, ranking about universities, specifically about what universities have easy girls. In easy girls meaning like what university have girls that are like easy to have sex with. And I was very frustrated because one, it had real university names. And it was very like, I just felt like in Japan, especially young girls are sexualized in a way. It's kind of this brand where a lot of people like high school girls, middle school girls, university girls. And also not the other side of me that was like, as a university student myself, I did it like the fact that University students are treated in a way where people look at it like, ooh, like they're for like they're like for sale in, in a way. And then at the same, and plus on top of that, I was frustrated that nobody was trying to do anything about it. That this was becoming too normal. That people don't even have this, like, aren't even mad about it. Don't even think it's a problem because it's so normal. And this ranking was made. There's it was five universities that are ranked. And these universities were ranked because, for example, oh, these girls aren't so smart. Like, their universities aren't so smart, so they're kind of like desperate for men. Or they were also saying, like, these universities, these girls live far, so they need to stay at someone's house. And in Japan, um, we don't have this idea of consent yet. It's gradually coming up. But sexual consent is like, for example, if a girl stays at a guy's house, that's automatic consent. That's kind of like a stigma, which is very, like, different from Europe. Like. Like, especially I see a lot of these videos from the UK that are talking about sexual consent. Like, no is no. Like, if they're like, for example, if they're drunk, it's a no. But in Japan, if you're drunk, it's your fault. So those are kind of like, that, that was the big ranking. Yeah. You know, for example, in France, there's the yellow vest. And like, all over the world, there are a lot of those. But I feel like in Japan, the biggest like biggest group of the people that are like fighting against is like the very like right wing but they're for example they're very anti-korea anti-china and that was actually one of the biggest like backlashes i got 
right now feminism is growing in Korea. That's why a lot of these people that hate Korea thought that me raising awareness and all, all like a lot of these feminists raising awareness about gender equality in Japan was like a Korean thing. So a lot of these people were like, stop trying to make Japan like Korea. So I've been called like, so, like a Cur like they're like shut up you Korean kind of thing. They're like Korea, go back to Korea, <laughs> things like that. And also just in general, it was very interesting because for example, even when I gave a presentation or when I went to talk to the media company, I went in like short sleeves. And then again, people were like, why is she in short sleeves? Or like, they're like, why, why is she trying to like show off or something? And I was like, people like try to pick up on unnecessary things. Like they don't get the point. They just try to like flip things. And... But in general, like I think I got more good feedback. I, was, I got a lot of, for example, people that are like 40s, 50s actually like apologize to me for saying sorry that you have to deal with this right now because these are things that have been going on for 30, 40, like 40 years and a lot of people were like sorry we couldn't change this. Um, I think in terms of talking about politics with my friends or family, with my family we talk a lot about politics. Um, ever since I was little, in our house, we would talk about social issues, controversial topics like abortion, death penalty. Still in my house, like yesterday, me and my mother talked about like the law regarding abortion in Alabama. Or we talked about, um, no, we talked about the death penalty in Japan. We talked about a lot of different issues and the coming up election. But with my friends, I would say in Japan, not a lot of people like to talk about politics. When you bring up anything about politics, people use this word called ishiki takai, which means you, it's kind of like, how would you say it? Like, oh, you think a lot, like, you know. It's like, it's like a bad way of saying you're smart, kind of. So when you talk about politics, they would use this word to kind of insult you, and then they would kind of look down on you and be like, why are you talking about that? Like, why are you trying to show off? And a lot of people aren't interested. They don't care about voting. They don't want to go to protests or demonstrations. So Voice of Japan is an organization I created in February after the sex ranking was published. We started with five girls, but then no, it was four girls and one guy. And then we gradually added more members. And right now we are about 14 people. We, we are from Japan, England, America, Germany, France. It's, so we, we are very diverse. And we are an organization, basically we are also a platform, a community, and media that it's, yeah, we're a bilingual platform, we're a bilingual community, a media. We try to basically voice up about different issues in Japan, specifically regarding gender. And we also try to shed a light on people that deserve to be heard. And also we make this community so that we, like anyone can be feel safe. It's like a safe space. Anyone can feel safe to talk about what's happening or talk about like issues they face or even put like a controversial topic. I think it's, this is very mistaken in Japan, but when you talk about feminism in Japan, I think the Japanese people think it's men versus women. That's why it's kind of becomes this war between men and women. But in reality, it shouldn't be a war about men and women because there are a lot of men fighting for this cause because feminism isn't about women like rights, like women's rights. It's about equal rights. And it's like equal rights doesn't mean like the men's rights or like are less rights, you know, it's equal rights. And there are a lot of men fighting for this same cause, but at the same time, there are a lot of women trying to oppress the other woman. So I feel like it's actually men and women fighting against the society, but it's becoming a war in Japan. But I do believe that the men's role is very important, especially because in countries like Japan, where it's a very patriarchal like society, a lot of people, especially like 60s, 70s, won't listen to a woman talking to them. Especially because it's like a machista society. They would just be like, no, you're a woman, I'm not talking to you. That's why the role of men is very important because some people that are very, very machista, I don't know how to say that, another language, machista, they don't want to listen to a woman itself. But when a man talks to those men, they could change. So I think in that sense, in a machista society, the role of men is very important in changing the minds of the people that are very, very, like, 
narrow-minded. I don't like this patriarchal culture, especially because, first of all, we're in 2019, and in, everywhere in the world there are female leaders, there are female like politicians, but in Japan I still feel like, like women are just still looked down at. Even if they work, for example, in a family, in like the small like, um, in these small units of society, for example, in a family, all of the housework, taking care of kids, are a woman's job. And then if you go to the society, they, for example, pressure you, oh, you're not getting married yet, you don't have kids. When you have kids, they say, oh, you have kids, so you can't work anymore. Like, I feel like we're such, we're really oppressed and women aren't able to like be empowered in Japan. That's why I feel very like uncomfortable and uncomfortable and I don't really like to, I don't really like the society where women are kind of like, there to be used for men or right? women are there to like enhance men. I think there. I think it's very hard for women to speak up when there's sexual violence or sexual assault, especially because there's two reasons. One is because the society has been telling that, like for example, it's the woman's fault. Um, my mother told me that when she was my age, her father would tell her that if she got into a car with a man, anything hap anything could happen, and it's gonna be her fault. That's how she was taught. And for example, that that's what my mother had told me. And that's kind of like the society, for example, if a girl's wearing a short skirt, a skirt that's trying to seduce the man. So it's gonna be her fault if she gets raped or like, she should, they use this word, she should have known better. Anything that happens, always the, the woman should have known better. It's kind of like the stigma that exists in the Japanese society. That's why I feel like 80, 90% of the time, it would be the woman's fault for walking alone at night, for wearing too much makeup or like, for being too drunk. And I think the second, other second reason is people kind of put a label that you're dirty, I think. Um, when I was in middle school, I was reading this comic book. And this in this comic book, this girl, this high school girl was raped by like some random guys. And then she was like, I'm dirty now. Like I've been raped by people I don't know and I'm dirty. Like I feel so dirty. And I feel like, and then she gets bullied by other people and being told, oh, you were raped, you're a dirty woman. I feel like that stigma is there ever since we're small, even in these comic books for middle school, high schoolers. That's why I think it's very hard for women to speak up because by speaking up, they're telling the whole world who they had sex with or like who they were raped by. And if they speak up, they're either told they're dirty or they're either told it's your fault. Why are you complaining about this? You're stupid. So I feel like that's the reason why it's very hard for a woman to speak up. Men as well, obviously, to speak up about sexual assault. In this machist society, especially these toxic masculin masculinity is pushed upon men and women. For example, until two years ago, the law regarding sexual assault was only for women. So there was no, like in the law, there was no sexual violence against men, which is crazy because men are also victims by women and by men. Well, I like to talk about, I'm very passionate about animal rights, especially because that relates to like minority rights. I feel like in this society, there are obviously people that are in power and there are people with less power or with less um, ability to speak up. And that would be like a lot of women, children, especially like children in developing countries that are exploited through um, child labor, but also animals because physically animals can't talk. And especially in a country like Japan that uses so much, for example, like elephant thorn, like uses a lot of fur. I feel like I'm very passionate about, especially I feel responsible for being the voice for people who can't speak up. And I feel like, yes, I'm very passionate about children and women as much as I am passionate for animals. I think Japan is one of the most, one of the countries that consume the most, like elephant tusks, still to this day. And also, a lot of the food that is like treasured by the Japanese culture is like, it's very toxic to, I think, to the society. Like for example, I feel like any, you know, the rich foods like caviar, like 
I, yeah, like caviar fukahide, it's fish, um, shark fin. Like, I feel like it's very brutal. Like, you get a shark, you cut off its fin, and then you put it back into the ocean. Like, oh. That's why, like, I don't eat anything related to animals. Like, I do eat eggs and milk, but... Yeah. I think in terms of environment, Japan is giving very little effort <laughs> because as you can see, especially if being from Europe, you'll see the amount of plastic we use. Plastic covered bananas, plastic covered watermelon, plastic covered oranges, everything's covered in plastic. People say we recycle, but we barely do recycle. They give you like three plastic bags for one thing. I think in terms of effort, like I feel like it's a very first world problem, like first world issue where um, if you're, if you have enough money, you don't have to deal with the consequence, consequences. Like, for example, yes, the earth, yes, the water may be polluted, but we have enough money to buy like expensive water. I feel like that's like the stigma in Japan. So we can, I think we're at a point where we can still buy off all of the consequences. So people don't really give a crap about anything. I think. In order to get help from the outside for Japan, it's very important to be more like a helping hand rather than pressuring. Because I think Japan does have some sort of resistance when we get a lot of outside power. Especially, personally, I do believe in the country's sovereignty, which for example, many countries like the US does not respect. The US would just like intervene to like Syria and be like, boom, like, and according to the international law, there aren't any penalties. It's enforced that you have to respect the country's sovereignty. There are no penalties, so like America can do whatever they want. <laughs> but leaving that aside, I think that's why it's very important for other countries to not be like, Japan, you suck, but being like, you, sh you can do like, these are other alternatives, or like, kind of like a gambare, like being like supportive of especially the activists in Japan. Because in Japan, I think, first of all, they, there's not a lot of empowerment. Um, I think because you've been in Japan, you know in Japan everything's like kawaii, like female are supposed to be submissive, quiet, like men should just be good looking, have be rich, not have an opinion. So I believe we lack the empowerment part. If you compare it to the good parts of the US, there are a lot of pop singers that advocate for animal rights, human rights, like female rights, and they are empowered. People find them as a role model, but in Japan I feel like it's the opposite people that advocate are kind of like looked down on. So I think by those people being empowered through the international community, it would be a better, like a new way in order for Japan to realize that being active is a good thing and is a cool thing. Yes, capitalism can be good to motivate economic growth. It can be good because in the end, it could um, get a country out of poverty. But I do believe that money has power. And when people have money, they become more greedy. So a lot of people would say like, oh, let's implement capitalism because socialism isn't gonna work. Capitalism will work. And when we have more money and when we have like a higher economic growth, we can use that money to combat the combat inequality or like help the poor, but they don't give a shit honestly. <laughs> like when they have the money, of course they're not wa gonna want to let it go. And then, because people are greedy, I think capitalism doesn't work. But at the same time, because people are greedy, socialism doesn't work fully. Because like you can see China and North Korea. I lost value in material items recently. I think that's helping me a lot. Um, whenever I almost lose my values, there's like a, docu a few documentaries I watch um, so that it kind of like gets my morals back in. And like, for example, an elephant, like this, my necklace, also I have an elephant tattoo that is connected to all of my morals about animal rights, about child rights, about being an activist. So that's kind of like, it's kind of like a reminder for me to not forget the origin of me being like, I feel like everything started about animal rights as well, about like, about me um, questioning inequality, questioning why some people have more rights than others. And that like frustration and looking into South American history, looking into the US intervention, and 
the Philippines, Okinawa, all the things happening around the world. All of that frustration and that confusion made me want to become an activist and an entrepreneur. So I think I tried to remind myself to not lose that passion in me. Spirits on the night, all the vibes really want to go.